Welcome to American Black Journal. I'm Stephen Henderson. Research shows that legacy planning within black-owned businesses lags behind that of other cultures. Unlike Jewish, Asian, or Caucasian business owners, African Americans are less likely to pass the baton to the next generation. My first guests today are defying that trend. Bernard White is the founder of White Construction. A new book traces his company's legacy as one of the nation's largest African American owned construction companies. His oldest son has now taken on a leadership role in the business. And James and Elizabeth Mays are a father-daughter team heading up MCS Multimedia, formerly known as Mays Printing. The company was originally founded by James's father, Jay Calton Mays. All of you, welcome to American Black Journal. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so let's start with this idea of passing the baton uh, from one generation to the next and why that's less likely to happen uh, with with African American businesses, it's very important, as you know, Stephen. Uh, you know, as you may know, <clears throat> only about thirty percent of the companies are passed to the second generation, and maybe about ten percent are passed to the the, uh, the third generation. So my goal is to pass it on to my son, Donovan White, who's thirty-eight years old. He's been working in the company for twenty years. He's doing a great job. He's gotten a great deal of experience. Just came off the new um, Little Caesars Arena uh -huh. in, a, in a leadership role. So I'm doing everything I can to support him going forward so he can uh, you know, keep the company going. But I'm beginning to rest, but I will still be, be there to help support him and lead him. Uh, in addition to that, to uh, support my legacy, I've, uh, I've penned the book White Construction, An American Story, built in Detroit. Uh, the Mage Printing Company, of course, printed the book, and also <laughs> Don James was our writer. And, and the reason why I did this was to, to document our history. It's a pictorial representation of all the uh, various projects that we've had an opportunity to work on in the city of Detroit over the last 29 years. And I think a lot of people will be very surprised to see some of the things we've worked on. And I did it because I wanted to make sure I didn't depend on Google and or Wikipedia to tell us, you know, what white construction <laughs> to tell is. tell your story. Exactly, right? in 15 or 20 years. And hopefully some, some kid, African American, uh, male or female, may look at it and, uh, and, and become inspired such they could pursue their dreams after reading my story as to what I did to get where I was. So yeah. I'm very proud of that. And in fact, you can, you can purchase the book on the, uh, the www.educationfoundation.org website. Uh -huh. It's for sale for 55 bucks, and all the proceeds go to the W. Bernard White Education Foundation. And we, uh, we typically uh, support uh, African-American students, male and female. Last year, we gave $10,000 uh, to uh, 20 students at LTU, male Excellent. and female. And so they could uh, buy books at the bookstore, et cetera. And they were very, very pleased with it. It really did more for me to help them out uh, than it probably did for them. So yeah. I'm very proud of that. Mm. Uh, so talk about yeah. the father-daughter team, how important <laughs> that is, and, and whether that uh, is the key to, I guess, making sure that the business stays in the family. Yeah. OK. Uh, back in 1946, my father was a Tuskegee Airman. Uh -huh. uh, after he was discharged, from the United States Army Air Force, he, he migrated to Detroit, mm -hmm. Michigan, where he started the uh, Mage Printing Company. Um, my father always said it, when he came to Detroit, uh, he started his business on the back of a streetcar. Mm -hmm. He would ride from Jefferson <laughs> all, the back, all the way to Eight Mile Road, uh -huh. and that was his office. Right. <laughs> <laughs> that works, right? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and what he always told me is that I'm building this company for you. For you, yeah. And my children and my children's children. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Okay? And he delivered on the actual promise. He sent all of his children to college, yeah. pay for them himself, yeah. mm -hmm. in the back of a print shop, <laughs> uh, sitting tight by hand, and working all day and night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. wow. By saying that, I continue the actual promise that my father gave me. Yeah. And I pass the torch over to all five of my children, and they all have college degrees. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and that's uh, kind of a first step, right? You can't really pass the business on easily uh, to people who who are not ready to run it. Right. 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 Yeah. right. Yeah. Now, what my father used to always say, it, and people used to ask him, uh, "How did you get your son to join the business?" Yeah. He said, "I did not deny my son his childhood." Huh. I let him play baseball, yeah, yeah. go to the YMCA, swim, Boy Scout, <laughs> Cub Scout, like, et cetera. So 
when the decision came, I made it on my own. You did it on your own. That's mm -hmm. interesting. And was not forced. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, Which is important. Did you experience that same thing? You know what's so crazy? Um, yes and no. So I yeah. definitely grew up in the family business. Um, as a child, I remember, you know, listening to the presses run, um, seeing my father and my grandfather <laughs> handle business and, you know, take care of their staff. Um, so when I was in college, I actually went to school for film. Mm -hmm. And um, oh. in the midst of me being in my um, second year of college, my father said, get a degree in printing. And I'm like, well, why? <laughs> <laughs> and he said, because you never know when you might need it. So I listened and I took my degree. So when I graduated from college, my father was telling me that it was time to pass the business over. And um, luckily I was prepared. Yeah. Um, I grew up, you know, pretty fast. My mom had lost her sight when I was a little younger. So I kind of um, took on like a lot of adult responsibilities mm -hmm. um, at that time, which kind of was slowly but surely molding me. Um, and of course, being in the operation and knowing what it's like the day to day, um, you know, taking over the family business really wasn't even a hard decision. Mm -hmm. And luckily I did have my degree in it. So I had knowledge, right. you know, a lot of right. children go straight into the family business um, it may not necessarily have any book knowledge they only have kind of I don't want to say street knowledge but they've you know in shop the business, they've right. seen it but it, it took it it took me to another level um, to really understand the education behind it and I'm glad that I did yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad that I did so he definitely prepared us yeah. uh -huh. uh, I, I know you uh, you know this uh, because of the industry you work in but um, I, I feel like the city would be a different place if more african-american businesses were able to to extend that legacy further. I mean, you think of the opportunities in construction, for instance, think of all the stuff we're doing mm -hmm. uh, in the city right now and that we talk about participation all the time. Yes. That would be an easier question to solve if there were more businesses that had, had maintained that, that legacy. Mm -hmm. there, there are quite a few African-American-owned businesses in, in the city of Detroit, uh, and I know quite a few construction-related mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. subcontractors uh, prime contractors have done very well. And, and I should say that, you know, over our 29 year history, we've, we've had a lot of and enjoyed a lot of support from the city of Detroit under the shelter sure. market program, yeah. um, uh, executive board of number four. A lot of that has been, uh, you know, dismantled now, if you will, yeah. for yeah. Uh, under proposal uh, two and passed in 2006, as you can no longer have any race or gender based uh, right. contracting or education. Uh, things going on so it's going to be a little bit hard and I told my son he's probably not going to enjoy the same opportunities that I've enjoyed that you did, huh? uh, but uh, hopefully he will continue to do well based on the, the fact that we've done a great job over the years and we've uh, developed a great reputation. Yeah. Um, when was the first time you remember uh, your dad just even raising the idea that uh, that this was for you was it in college or was it, it was in that? college when he told me to get the degree yeah. you know and I'm so like, he hadn't really talked about it before. no he hadn't really talked about it before because you know he was running the operation uh -huh. and you know doing a you know a fantastic job at that so when I did graduate from college and I started to actually work a little bit more in the family business more full-time because I didn't have to be in school um, I think he started to see some things in me that I didn't mm -hmm. necessarily see in myself <laughs> yeah. and I've always had leadership roles um, throughout my entire life and have always been very confident in doing what I believe I can. Um, but, you know, being able to actually take on the entire business yeah. is a different, it's a, it's, big, a, it's a total different yeah. thing. I now see, you know, why my father didn't come home some nights until midnight because he was so busy, you know, um, getting out those, those last minute orders, <laughs> right, you know, right. and um, structuring um, the right plans in order to grow the company. So, but taking on the family business is a, it's a, it's a different beast than working in it. Uh, would it have been possible that you could have uh, looked at your children and said, you know what? I'm not sure they, they, they can do this. Or did you always feel like it was your responsibility to make sure that they would be? Well, let me say this. When Elizabeth was a child, mm -hmm. being that my wife and I had five children, mm -hmm. okay, and she taught for, for DPS, mm -hmm. what I did each morning, I would take Elizabeth to school before I went to the office. Yeah, yeah. Okay? And at 2.30 every day when she was a child, I would pick her up. I would bring her home. Yeah. And at that time, we did have a big printing plant, and then I did have my main office there, but I kept an office at home. Okay. So when I picked her up, and she was, you know, she was only like about five years old, six yeah. years old. <laughs> I would go to my home office and start working, I start working. until my wife came in yeah. around four o'clock. So Liz, uh, she was a baby, <laughs> and she would get on the chair and she would get on my back and <laughs> right. hug my back right. while like I'm while you're working while like I'm working. <laughs> so she was 
seeing how daddy was working. Yeah. Yeah. Then from that point, like uh, she got a piece of paper and a pen, and and she wanted to actually mimic me, right, <laughs> right, right, <laughs> on what I was doing. Yeah. Wow. Then she would fall asleep on the couch right yeah. behind my desk. <laughs> so um, she was. It's that kind of subtle immersion, right? Yeah, to it a, was. a good yeah. work ethic. Yeah. It does. And mm -hmm. my parents never forced us to do anything, yeah. literally. And um, one thing that I kind of want to touch back on when you were saying, um, how do you pass the business over to your, your children yeah. or your children's children? They right. truly have to be interested. They want to, they would have to want it. Absolutely. They would have to yeah. want it. Um, and in our family business, um, even though I am the CEO, um, the parents and the children have to understand that there's right. so many other roles within the company that, that are possible can, yeah. that you don't have to worry about just trying to fulfill a position parallel to yeah. what your parents had, right. but instead being in the business just in some capacity. Yes. Think about it, you have to hire an accountant, yeah. you have to hire a cleaning yeah. company, you have yeah. to hire a VP. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. so many roles, but if you truly understand that, then that kind of you know softens yeah. the blow of what mm -hmm. it might be to take over a business. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. we are out of time, but oh, uh, no. <laughs> thank you both for being here. This is really oh, well, great. Yeah. You're doing wonderful work. <laughs> work in the community. Obviously. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank okay. you. Oh, okay.